Hey fellow grumps, long time no see. I'm here to do our project for the month of April. Chosen by our friend Rick Leaves, his first choice, and he made a very good choice. He chose the Ten Commandments, which Ten Commandments from 1956, which is probably the epic to end all epics, and uh, directed by Cecil B. DeMille, cast of thousands, a lot of them were camels. Uh, <laughs> so let me talk a little bit about this. First I'll show you my, my DVD set here, which I picked up I think I picked this up used a couple of years ago and uh, never got around to watching it until I watched at least at home for this um, for this project. So this is a very nice set, three discs, really nice artwork on the inside. Uh, okay, still more artwork. And uh, like I said, three discs. The movie is... Uh, has two discs worth of material, part one, part two, and then the third disc has the silent version, also directed by Cecil, Cecil B. DeMille, which I haven't yet watched, but I'm sure I will at some point. Now, about the Ten Commandments, I, um, I've i said this before in some videos, and I think in conversations on Facebook, that I have this, this memory of seeing this movie back in 1956 in the theater when it first came out. And I would have been five years old. I, I remember doing that. And uh, I, I'm ready to say that <clears throat> my memory could be a little bit mixed up. I don't know. Every time I talk to my sister, who was three years older than me, about something I remember from childhood, she said, no, that didn't happen. You weren't even there. This is what happened. So I, <clears throat> I haven't asked her about this yet, but I'm kind of afraid to. But I do have a very strong memory of seeing it. And what sticks out in my mind is, of course, the parting of the Red Sea. You just don't forget something like that, even when you're five years old. So, And I'm sure at some point down through the years, I've also seen this on television or maybe some parts of it. And uh, several years ago, five, six years ago, well, no, it wasn't that long, just a couple of years ago, it was revived on the big screen I think right around Easter time. It, it was this year as well in some places, but I didn't go to see it. But I did see it a couple of years ago on the big screen. Thoroughly enjoyed it. There were so many things I didn't remember and had a great time watching it. Um, I thought that I was going to be bored out of my skull watching this, sitting at home watching this. But, you know, I, I very quickly just got into it and, and really enjoyed it. And this print, I mean, it's not a Blu-ray or anything, but it's it's beautiful and very, very nice uh, sound and all that sort of thing. I like the movie very much. I like all the actors. I mean, uh, Charlton Heston, how can you not like Charlton Heston playing Moses? Um, Yul Brenner is terrific. Uh, Martha Scott, John Carradine, John Derrick, uh, Yvonne DiCarlo, long before she married um, Herman Munster. Uh, Vincent Price is in it, Deborah Padgett. It's nice to see Vincent Price and Deborah Padgett doing scenes together, knowing that a few years down the road they would they would uh, work together again in Tales of Terror and The Haunted Palace. Uh, Deborah Padgett is kind of a forgotten, beautiful star from the 1950s, and it's really nice to see her. Um, the one drawback to the film that I have to say is Anne Baxter. Now, I guess I haven't seen her in that many films, but I, I always would have said that I like Ann Baxter a lot. I think she's very talented, but I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything but all about Eve, Eve Harrington. Every time she came on screen, I thought she was channeling Eve Harrington. I don't think I will ever be able to see her in any other persona other than, than uh, Eve Harrington, which is my problem, not hers. But uh, I, I kept, I kept waiting for her to say things that Eve would have said. For example, when she was, rejecting uh, Yul Brenner's character because she didn't love him and she didn't want to marry him. <clears throat> I kept waiting for her to look at him and say, I don't know that I'd take you for anything. So uh, yeah, her, her acting, I think, was a big drawback to the film. I think that she was way over the top. I, I can imagine a lot of talented actresses of the time who would have been much better and would have been a little more... Uh, believable than Ann Baxter was. And it seems like even toward the end of the film when so many things were happening with the, the Red Sea, the, the Hebrews in, in, in uh, the desert and all this sort of thing, um, they kept going back to Ann Baxter and I thought, not again, 
please. So I, I guess this is turning into a rant against the uh, acting of Ann Baxter. I did, didn't mean for that to happen, but no, I actually had a great time watching this, and I will I will watch this again. And I definitely want to sit down and watch the silent version. Um, so thank you, Rick, for suggesting this, and uh, I'm glad that I took this off the shelf and finally watched it at home. So um, the Ten Commandments. I understand this is now out on Blu-ray. But this is so beautiful, I don't see any reason to replace it. And um, I will I will watch the silent version probably very soon. Okay, that's all I want to say. Uh, I love the special effects, the, the parting of the Red Sea. I'm, I don't know how they did it. It's very, very impressive, very exciting. And I love the uh, the scene where the Hebrews go crazy and build, build the golden calf because they're, they think Moses is never going to come down from that mountain. And uh, they have this this orgy thing going on, which uh, after a while it got to be a little bit much and was kind of laughable. But I've never been to an orgy where I didn't start laughing anyway. So <clears throat> strike that last comment. Anything you want to say about what I've uh, commented on here, I will certainly listen. Take care.